In this video, I'll demonstrate how to install the ASA Abloy Vision Line Server Software and Lock Service 3G software. These two programs are required to interface with the Ruckus IoT server. The requirements for integrating ASA Abloy Enterprise Locks to the Ruckus IoT controller include a virtual smart zone with IoT upgraded software, a virtual Ruckus IoT controller, a Ruckus AP with an IoT Zigbee dongle, ASA Abloy Vision Line Server Setup on a Windows PC, ASA Abloy Lock Service 3G software, which is used to initialize the ASA Abloy Lock with Vision Line, an ASA Abloy Lock, and a cable from the ASA Abloy Lock to the PC. The Vision Line and Lock Service 3G software is available with the Vision Line package. Before showing the demonstration, we need to understand the relationship between the Ruckus IoT controller and the ASA Abloy IoT endpoint. In this case, the Ruckus IoT controller will interface with a third-party ASA Abloy IoT management system called VisionLine that ASA Abloy uses to configure and operate their IoT endpoints. When initially configuring the ASA Abloy lock, another ASA Abloy program called Lock Service 3G is used for reading events from a lock and initializing lock-specific data. Once this initialization is set up, then the ASA Abloy lock can be monitored and operated by the Ruckus IoT controller. This video would demonstrate how to install VisionLine and Lock Service 3G. Then, in another video, we'll demonstrate how to set up and initialize the ASA Abloy lock to prepare it for communicating to the Ruckus IoT controller. Then we'll demonstrate the discovery operation of the ASA Abloy lock into the Ruckus IoT controller. To do this, we need to create a Windows-based VisionLine server. There is a VisionLine installation guide that you can use to guide you through the VisionLine installation. This is part of the VisionLine software package. So what we're going to do now is to install my VisionLine software. So I'm going to go to the folder where I have the software, and I'm going to click on the file. It says, Welcome to the VisionLine Setup Wizard. I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to take the default location. I'm going to install this as a client, but normally you would install this as a separate server in a hospitality or enterprise setting. So I'll click Next. Now I'm going to put an account name. i put in my name, and I'll enter in my password and hit Next. Next is the destination folder, and I'll take the default for that. Ready to install. And now it says, please wait while the setup wizard installs VisionLine. And this is going to take a little while. And it'll go through and configure the firewall exceptions, extracting the Java runtime environment. And we've now completed the VisionLine setup. So I'm going to click Finish. And we've now installed our VisionLine. After installing the VisionLine software, there are a few things that need to be configured on your PC before you launch the program. ASA Abloy Hospitality recommends that VisionLine is installed on a separate server referenced to as the ASA Abloy Hospitality server as firewall exemptions will need to be configured. Now in this example, I'm just using a personal PC, but in the real enterprise world, you would want to have a separate server. VisionLine setup will automatically add exceptions in the Windows firewall for some of the files in the installation folder and also for DCOM command port 135. The following exceptions are not done automatically. Exceptions for all TCP ports in the VisionLine device list that are used, for example, 7799 for Zigbee gateways, and also if TCP ports are used for a web service. So one of the first things we need to do is to make sure that our distributed COM or DCOM is disabled. So I type in DCOM config, and in the left pane of the Component Service dialog, click on the arrow to the left of the Component Services. And you want to right-click on My Computers and select Properties. You want to choose the Default Properties tab. And you want to unmark the checkbox next to Enable Distributed COM on this computer. So I'll uncheck that. And then I'm going to hit Apply. And you'll get a warning for that. And then we'll hit OK. And then we'll close that out. Next, we need to make some firewall exceptions. The following items must be manually set up as firewall exceptions. The PMS service device host encoders, Zigbee gateways, and other applicable device web service if any web service option is available. These can be added before or after the installation. So to do this, we'll go to our control panel. 
We'll select Systems and Security, and we'll select Administrative Tools. We'll double click on the Windows Defender Firewall and Advanced Security, and then we're going to click on Inbound Rules. Then we'll select the Action button, and we're going to choose New Rule. We want to check the button by Port, and then we'll click Next. And then we want to make sure that our TCP is checked and also specific local ports. And this is where I would add in my specific local ports. So I've selected 443, 7799, and 1580. Then I would select Next. And I want to make sure on the Action window that the button Allow Connection is checked. Then I would click on Next. And I want to make sure that all three of these checkboxes are checked for domain, private, and public. Then I'll click Next. So then if I had a web service, I could type that in. And I'll just put in the word web service, and then I'll click on Finish. And that completes that operation. The next thing I want to do is to configure my event log. If the event viewer has not been configured to overwrite events, this needs to be configured. So I would go to my control panel, and under System and Security, I would click on that. I would go to my Administrative Tools, and then I would click on Event Viewer. I would expand the Windows logs on the left, and then I'll click on Application. I would then go to the Action button, and I would choose Properties. And what I want to make sure is that when the maximum event log size is reached, that you'll overwrite events as needed. So I just wanted to make sure that that was set. In some cases, you may have that set on your, your PC, and on other cases, you may not have. So we don't have to do anything on that, but I just wanted to show that to you. Another thing that I need to make sure is that if Lock Application Starter is running, it must be stopped. So I would then click on my Administrative Tools from my Control Panel. And I'll click on Services. I would then scroll down and tag my Lock Application Server. And I would right-click on that, and I would want to make sure that this is stopped. In this case, it's already stopped, so I don't have to stop it. But you just want to make sure that if this was running, that you would want to stop it. So at this point, we've gone through and manually configured some exceptions. Once again, you can always refer to the Vision Line Configuration Guide if you have any questions, or if you need to go back at a later time and enter more TCP ports or configure other exceptions. The next thing that we need to do is to install our Lock Service 3G software, which is used for reading events from a lock and initializing lock-specific data. These two programs, Vision Line and Lock Service 3G, are going to be working hand-in-hand. As was the case with VisionLine, there is a Lock Service 3G Quick Reference Guide that would guide you through the configuration and the operation of the Lock Service program. So I'm going to go to my Lock Service 3G software, and I'm going to click on that. It brings up the wizard. Set up wizard. We'll install the Lock Service 3G on your computer. Click Next to continue or Cancel to exit the setup wizard. So I'll click Next. Take the default location. Do the install and then wait for the installation to complete. So as you can see, that took a that didn't take too much time, so it says completed the Lock Service 3G setup and now we're going to finish. So this completes how to install Vision Line and Lock Service 3G. We have another video on how to use these two programs together with the Ruckus IoT controller to configure and operate your ASA Obloy locks.